Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 190. 190, is that correct? I don't know. You can't keep up with these numbers. Oh, well. What I did is I've taped this three times, and every time there's been something with the audio, so I'm trying again. So bear with me if I sound a little bit upset. <sighs> Plus, I'm losing my voice because I've taped it so many times. Taped it. You don't use the word tape anymore. It's record because I'm not using tape. Okay. What I'm going to show you today is this is the County Com radio that they sent me for review. You can go to their website at countycom, one word, dot com and see this radio and a whole bunch of other things they sell and I did a, um, a functional feature review a couple shows ago and I still have to do the reception test what I did is now <laughs> it's it's almost two hours ago I used the ETM the easy tune uh, function and um, scanned the whole shortwave band and let it find stations for me. And it found, at that time, it found 27 stations. 27 stations, that's pretty good, in that shortwave band. And at the time that I did the scan, I did not have this computer over here that's doing the video recording, I didn't have it on because it creates a lot of interference. Now I did have the other four or five computers in this room on, but they're away from my desk, so they don't as interfere as much as this guy does. So, even though I'm going to now show you, go through the uh, frequencies that it found, you'll notice there's interference coming in which was not there before. So that's the situation, that's the way it is, and I've tried to explain it away. Anyway, here we go. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, okay, so I'll turn the volume up here. Okay, that's, that's the first one I found, which is at 5.0. Uh, zero four zero, which is Radio Habana, which is uh, well, I'm in Central Florida, is down in Cuba, south of me. So that came in, that comes in loud and clear. So with the next one, and I'm tuning through the memories that it stored, is five point zero seven zero. Turn the volume up. And that one is completely gone. Now, like I said, the other problem is, with the setup here, is I did this scan over now over an hour and a half ago, almost two hours ago. So some of these stations have gone off the air on these particular frequencies that it found before. That appears to be this, this one here, which was WWCR in Nashville, Tennessee. So we'll go down and see if we can find one that's still on the air. That's the same station, just a different frequency. It's not there. Another one, not there anymore. Okay. So as you can hear, that one's coming in loud and clear, except for the noise coming from the computer. And that one is at 5.920. And that's WHRI in Cypress Creek, and that's coming in loud and clear except for the noise from the computer. So we'll go to the next one that it found.
does not appear to be there. That was China radio from Cuba. So that was coming in loud and clear because it was coming. The tower is in compute. The tower is in Cuba and was coming in loud and clear. Sorry for that. Okay, let's try um, China radio in Zurich. And that's memory location 8. Frequency is 6020. Okay. Okay, that's coming in loud, and it would be clear if the computer wasn't interfering. So that one's that one's a good hit. Let's go on down. We'll skip a couple of them. Like I can see I found 27, so I'm not going to go through all 27. Um, try Toronto, which was at 6.070. Whoop! There's one. Now that is really loud and clear. It's overriding the noise from the computer, but that was from Calgary. That obviously now is a Cuban station that's coming in. So we're not getting the station from Calgary anymore. Let's get. Okay. Well, Toronto I was looking for, which is 6070. Then completely gone. Sorry about that. Completely gone. Let's go down to, and that was CFRX out of Toronto at 6.070. It's gone now. Uh, we have, um, when I Cypress Creek, uh, WHRI at several frequencies. Let's go up to one of them. It found. If I turn the dial the correct direction, which was 7.315, whoops, it just went past it. Gone. Next one. Gone. Gone. They're all gone. And let's try one that was in coming out of Monticello, WBCQ. I like this station. This is a fun station. It's up in New England, I believe, and it's very low power for, you know, international broadcasting. So it's quite hard to hit. 7.490. Zero. Point nine, seven point, what did I say? 7490. Here it is. Okay. It's in there, but it's very weak. Uh, you know, what I'm doing is I'm trying to null out the noise coming from the computer. That's why I'm rotating the radio. Um, of course, I'm using the internal whip antenna. I'm not using any external antenna on this radio at this time. That's why it's always, if you can, in your, your, you know, in your office or in your house, and there's a lot of interference. If you can, use an external antenna. And better yet, have the antenna come in via shielded cable. And I'll show you uh, what that means in a few seconds. We're going to try one, two more, two more. We'll try Radio Romania at 9620, 9.620, 96, whoops, went past it. It's there. It's trying to come in, but again, the computer is just completely wiping it out. Now, I could turn the computer off, but then you wouldn't get the recording, so you couldn't see what the results was. Try the last one, which was number 27 that it found, which was WWV at 10 megahertz. And...
it's that's WWV, so it's always there. And I can slightly hear the ticking of the clock um, over the noise of the computer, but just barely. Now, I want to show you something. Is here is my uh, Grundig 750. And because I've got it at my desk and I use this computer here a lot, I have to, I can't use the built in telescopic antenna. Just like this radio, it just gets killed. So we're going to turn it on. And it's, right now it's tuned to WWV on 10 megahertz, which is, this is where this one is sitting right now. And you can, you can hear the, the clicks very distinctly. Where on this radio with its built in antenna, um, let me turn the volume back up. I, I, I can't hear the clicks at all. Now, one thing I can try is I'll disconnect, turn this off, disconnect my external antenna, which comes in in the shielded cable. Here's the shielded cable and the connector that's shielded all the way to the radio. So there's no, um, there's no open single line. And I'll c try to connect it to this little portable radio using uh, a single wire. So it's not shielded. So for the length of this wire, it's unshielded and that's susceptible to the, from, susceptible to the noise from the computer. And then I'll put this antenna down so I can get a small section so I can easily clip this on. So I'm going to clip this on there. Turn the volume up. And... I do not hear WWV. So that means one of at least two things, and both of them are not conclusive, is that the reception capability of this little portable is not as good as this big Grundig, even using an external antenna, but I have this extra unshielded lead uh, going to the antenna. Now one thing I could try more just for grins is I can try touching this to the radio. Let me turn the volume up. Aha! Turn the volume up more. Okay. There's, there was a time. So, you can see by this rather crude test that using this little piece of wire here to connect this shielded antenna cable that's coming in from my antenna that's outside um, was allowing the interference from the computer to come in via this little cable, unshielded cable, where when I took and just connected the end of the uh, coax to the antenna manually, uh, I got the signal where before I got too much interference, couldn't get the signal. Small test does indicate that the radio, when it doesn't have this interference from the computer, has very good reception. Maybe not quite as good as the Grundig. This is a $250 uh, radio on sale. Manufacturer's price is $400. This is a hundred, about a $100 radio. It's on sale at County Com for about $45 right now. 
So price-wise, a big difference. This has a lot of features this doesn't have. This has single sideband, this doesn't, and so on. But anyway, so let's go back, move this out of the way, put this down on the floor. So here's the scorecard that I did before. And I don't know if you see it. So I scored it on these things down up depth to here before when I did my review before on another video. Look and feel scored a B minus. Readability of the display scored an A. Power options scored a B. Tuning as far as how you tune it, not reception, scored a B. And audio quality scored an A. And now reception, I'm going to give it a B, maybe a B minus, but See, even if it was a B minus, uh, the overall grade is still going to be a good B. So the final grade for this radio is going to be a B. And for a nice, portable, uh, easy to carry shortwave radio, AM, FM, shortwave, I think this is a great buy. Only thing it doesn't do is single sideband. It does have both the ETM function and the ATS function which the Grundig has, um, and, you know, I think it's a great little radio. So that's for the show for today. If you have any comments, please leave a comment. I appreciate you watching. Thank you, and please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review. Bye-bye.